Right here we've got a 1984 Lull Highlander 3 model 622 and it's been sitting for about 20 some odd years. The owner said when he parked it somebody stole the batteries out of it and he believes it may have been sabotaged. It's currently slated to be cut up for scrap and so today I want to see if we can get the little four cylinder diesel running again and if not what's wrong with it can we find a buyer all of that in this video. The audio was messed up in this initial clip so I had to voice over but uh, let's dive right into it. We are juiced up with two Optimas. One of them fully charged, the other one maybe halfway. Uh, this is our fuel filter. It's got a clear housing and it looks, I don't know, it looks nasty in there, but looks like it'll work. And the fuel comes in on this side. We've got a mechanical pump mounted to the block. So this is our inlet right here, this orange one. And we'll, uh, we'll tap some diesel into that. It's coming over. The supply right there. Yeah, it smells bad, but not as bad as old gasoline. I just had to disconnect the batteries because I smell something burning back here. I don't know what's burning over there. I mean, I don't have any. Yeah, we do get a little arc when we hook the battery up, so we definitely got something drawing current. We're hooked back up, ready to do a crank test, see if this motor's locked up. And again, you should always go and hand crank it, but I'm not really worried about that on this one. And so I got power sent to this, and of course the oil level, you know, we'll check all that if we can see if the motor even moves. So I would think that the middle one, the middle wire is right here, but I'm just kind of tapping around. I got nothing. The starter's right down beneath the fuel filter and actually that's where the smoke smell is coming from. Ooh, the solenoid is on fire. That thing's scorching. Almost like power was just being sent to it the whole time. And starter nothing, so it was never engaging. I guess we'll go ahead and just put a socket on the crank. Feels like maybe 19 mil. And here it goes. No, oh, it's tight. It... Oh no, it's that's locked up. It doesn't want to go. Let's see what's in this oil. Please don't be water. All right, we got nice black oil in there. Let's cut the dry rider belt off because I don't see that alternator turning at all. Look at that. It does rotate now. Turn her all the way over. And we've got a full 360 plus some. Beautiful. Got the other end of this directly down on the starter solenoid. Let's give that a tap. All right, we do have continuity though. You see that? So oh, that solenoid is just stuck. Let's try giving it the hand. Try to loosen things up in there. Same deal. Big can, let's just slide this off since that's what was kind of overheating to begin with. Here's what the starter solenoid looks like. When I loosen that one bolt, just crack the whole thing off. And this is still just scorching hot. And with that bypassed. Ooh! There's the starter going. If you guys can hear that. It tried. Somebody probably at one point just threw a new solenoid on instead of pulling the starter out because it's really a pain to get to the other bolt on it. There it is. It's rotating. Oh boy. Not happy at all. There it is. Oh, that's a lot of juice. Yeah, I'm tempted to wire these in series and get 24 volts going through that starter. Sometimes that'll work. I've done it before. <laughs> It'll blow the thing up, but. We might get it started with that. Check this out, we got power sent to the starter right now. Battery has 12.4 volts. We got good ground to the battery, but then the whole entire engine case, it has power to it. Uh, so I guess we have a ground issue. Disconnect these first. Let's chase this. So I thought this one ran straight back to the starter, but that's impossible because Okay, it doesn't. It goes down to this block and then to the starter. Because I mean, the whole engine is positive 12 volts, including this ground. So that also runs up to here. We have a bad connection in between these two. Well, check that out. 
whole thing came out of the crimp, so it probably overheated and burned out. And now we got vice grip to the ground, so we have nothing protecting us or keeping us from destroying the batteries or the starter. Should have cranked now. Okay, that sounded pretty good. Actually, it didn't sound great, but let's give it another go. Okay, <laughs> shot of ether. A little knocking never hurt a diesel, right? Hang in, knocking. Yeah, that sounds bad. And we have major oilage coming out of the exhaust. It's a big crack in the exhaust too. Actually, it almost looks like, looks like somebody cut that. Yeah, that was done with a cutting wheel. Hmm. Okay. Sounds like the starter motor is kind of disengaging too. You're really not supposed to use that much stirring fluid, but. Oh, now it's not engaged. So I gotta manually re engage the starter. Go oh, full mad max here, guys. Really bad. Oh, the balloon's going up on its own. This is a bleed valve on top of the fuel filter. I'm gonna try cracking that when we run it one more time. We got a good prime. A bunch of air came out of there. I'm gonna try to work the pump now. <laughs> Turns out on this injection pump, there's a little solenoid, and I believe you have to send power to that to send fuel. Could be mistaken, but let's give that a go. Oh, a lot of starter fluid. I got some throttle body cleaner. Start on that. I'm gonna grab this farm jack so we can jack her up and check the oil level. Oh, yeah, look at that, busy bees in the spring. My bees absconded last year, so I assume these are just robin honey, but I'll have to pop that back apart, see what's going on. I just want to get this sitting a little bit more level. If I can. That's gonna upset my boom prop though, huh? Holy smokes! Oh yeah, that's too heavy for the farm jack. Let's pour a little oil in here just to see if it comes on the dipstick. Be safe. Oh, that's rusty in there, huh? That's the surface rust. Pour two quarts in. Let's see if we got anything on here now. Uh, yeah, a little bit on the bottom of the stick now. Coming up about three quarter. It looks nasty, but that'll work. down on this injection pump. I can't get it to stay running. Working the throttle back and forth and everywhere else. I got air into the high pressure fuel system. Didn't have to bleed the lines. So we're gonna have to start wrapping this one up. Let's see if that alternator was seized. Get this belt off of here. Oh, oh man, it feels like glued in there. 
Yeah, so the alternator's rock solid. The water pump was not seized. Just the alternator. <laughs> Dude, we are getting diesel flow because the return is diesel. So we are getting it through the pump. Let's see how that looks when we run it. Yeah, a ton of flow out of the return. Last thing I want to try, I hooked the return back over to the diesel fuel can, cracked an injector loose, and I want to try bleeding them because a lot of time what can happen is if there's air in the high pressure fuel system, uh, if, there's, if they're trying to compress air through these, then it just will never compress. <laughs> this one that's been cracked loose. I'm going with injection pump. I think somebody may have ran this dry or with really crummy fuel, or maybe it's just from sitting, but that's not passing fuel through it. And so just to recap, you know, we, we bled it here at the filter, had good diesel. I also bled it where that line comes in to the pump right here. I don't know what this little solenoid is, but we tried energizing it and not energizing it. It, it clicks when it goes, so that, that could be hung up. Not sure, but I don't have any. I cracked the lines down here where they come out toward the cylinder head. I don't have any flow coming out and definitely no flow up at the injectors. So the pump just doesn't seem to be passing diesel through it. This is a Lucas CAV. I was just looking them up. Uh, I saw a used one for $975 on eBay, or you can get yours rebuilt for $400 plus parts if it needs anything. Uh, a guy on eBay had that deal. A pretty expensive repair, and when you factor in all the hoses, the alternator, and the tire, and everything else that this forklift needs, uh, probably not worth it. Unless, of course, you get it for free, because then you can put some money in it, and even the, the trans ends up being blown, or whatever the case, you can recoup your money with scrap value. Of course, you would have to have the means to trailer this out, which I don't. It's lift capacity is 6,000 pounds. I'm guesstimating this has got to weigh at least 12 to 15,000. If you guys know, let me know down below. Don't even know what engine this is. Maybe it's a Cummins or maybe it's a John Deere. If you have any info, uh, feel free to drop that down below. Will it run Yeah, on certain food, which is horrible to do for diesels. That's why it's making that really loud knocking noise uh, because this is extremely volatile. And you know, it's it's diesel engine is not designed to run on something like that. Uh, diesel is much less volatile, so it's kind of a shame because the motor sounded sounded good. You know, uh, certainly needs a ton of work though. We did get the boom to go up a little bit, so that was cool. Uh, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, this one will probably be uh, scrapped up by the time you guys see this video because they need to get it out of here so this was just kind of a little preliminary mess around with it let me know what you think this would have been worth i put it up for sale best offer i got was two grand or i'm sorry two hundred dollars on it have it up for two grand maybe i could lower it down to i don't know 800 but geez it's probably worth thousand or more in scrap at least hopefully you still enjoyed it or learned a couple things unfortunately just kind of another disappointment i'm having real bad luck with with these diesels i've been messing with uh, but I guess they just don't hold up as good as an old gasoline engine. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you. Hey, making out, Stacy. Pretty good, you? Yeah, uh, pretty good, I man. Just take a little break there. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's uh -huh. cool. Breaking down some tires again. Yeah. Heck yeah. How's that torch working? Well, I cut that rim apart. Oh yeah, blew yeah. right through it or what? Yeah. I just had to. Yeah, it's a short oh, piece. Yeah. I, I just need to cut between the um, center of the rim and the uh, lug nut hole. So okay, nice. Yeah, got right rest through. with the uh, sweet with the tire. So I got it off. So hey, when, when's the last time you saw that law? You saw the law lever operate? You ever see that thing work? I've never seen it work though. No, she told me about 25, 30 years or something like that. But. Here was the fate of the law. It did roll and winch up onto a flatbed. So found a buyer for it, and hopefully they'll put some work into it and. Get it working good again.